My name is Mira Wilson, and this is my St. Mary's project titled The Loss of Female Vocal Complexity and Duetting Behavior in the Ancestors of Carolina Wrens. I worked on this project all year with Dr. Jordan Price, and here we go. So, birdsong historically has been approached as a male trait, and this is due in part to its historical bias towards conducting studies on northern temperate species. And in temperate species, it is common that the males sing and the females don't sing. There also has been a historical neglect in general of studying female birdsong. And actually a recent case study found that this is because a majority of previous research has been conducted by male scientists. So this case study, which was actually done by a grad student at UMBC under Kevin Omland, who gave a couple talks here at St. Mary's this year, found that um, recent research that has been providing us more information on female song is because more women have been conducting these studies. So this research is revealing that female song is common. There's lots of tropical songbird species where females are prolific singers and produce duets even with their mates. So duetting is another very important aspect of vocal behavior in songbirds. It occurs in over 400 different songbird species. It can be, it can involve highly coordinated, precise, perfectly timed duets, but it can also involve just any, any sort of singing by male and female at the same time. And there's lots of hypotheses for the function of duetting. And the most common is that it's used by male female pairs for communication, things like territorial, defense, and um, breeding behavior. So there's a historical belief also that diverse song repertoires and complex song structure in males were evolutionarily driven by sexual selection on males exclusively. However, this is from a study by Karen Odom in 2014, where she actually showed that singing by both males and females occurred in the ancestors of all modern songbirds. So in this figure right here, this chart, this little pie chart, shows that it's very likely that female song was present in the ancestor of all of these songbirds. And this actually disproves this, this belief that sexual dimorphism in song was due to past selection for song in males and species where females sing in which females sing, female song was selected for. It actually means female song was selected against in species where females don't sing. So now that we know that female song was ancestral in songbirds, this begs another important question of where evolutionarily and why female song has been lost in so many species, particularly in temperate species. So I focused on Carolina wrens in my study. Carolina wrens are a temperate species from the family Troglodytidae. Females are not generally described to sing but they do produce a simple rattling call that often overlaps with the song of their male mate. And this has sometimes been termed a crude duet or a rudimentary duet. And that's actually what Rustin Perez SMP is on, which I highly recommend watching. He took a look at specifically these duets. He analyzed the degree of overlap between the female rattle call and the male song and found, spoiler alert, there was a significant degree of overlap, meaning it would be accurate to term this a crude duet. And also the range of these birds is temperate, as I mentioned, and there's lots of them in Maryland, all over the Northeastern United States, but lots of them in Maryland, lots of them on the St. Mary's campus, making them a good bird to study. So my SMP wanted to answer these two questions. Did the ancestors of Carolina wrens produce acoustically complex female song, and did they coordinate their vocalizations with males to produce duets? And to answer these questions, I constructed, I reconstructed a variety of traits relating to female vocal behavior on some phylogenies or evolutionary trees. I use this program called Mesquite. And in this program, you have a character matrix where there are all of the species. So there's 59 species that I used because those are the ones that had DNA data. This program uses the DNA data to reconstruct an evolutionary tree of the ancestors of this entire family. So this is just seven of the 59 species that I reconstructed. And up here you have the various traits, and then in here you add the data for each trait. So I collected my data from a variety of written sources, as well as quantitatively, I went to the Macaulay Library at the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, which is this database filled with all kinds of animal vocalization recordings, but lots and lots of bird song. 
And I looked at spectrograms, which are visual representations of song. You can see the frequencies over time. And I used that to, to uh, collect my data on female vocalizations. So for my study, I specifically wanted to look at the evolution of three traits. We have female vocal complexity, which I scored as either simple or complex. We have male-female duet coordination, which I scored as either no duet, crude duet, or coordinated duet. And then we have similarity of male song and female song. And then they're similar or not similar. So this is what a tree constructed by mesquite looks like. As you can see at the top, we have all of the different species in the family Troglodytidae. And right here by the asterisk is our Carolina wren. So this tree specifically shows female song, whether it's absent or present. Our Carolina wren, I scored as absent. And we're also, it's important to note that they share one common ancestor with Buix wren right next to them. Um, this, this phylogeny uses maximum likelihood to reconstruct ancestral states. So each of these pie charts is at a node where an ancestor was, and the pie chart shows the probability, the likelihood that a given trait was present in that ancestor. So for the purposes of my study, we want, I wanted to examine the evolution of vocal complexity in Carolina wrens, which means the most important ancestors to observe were this one, the ancestor of all wrens, this ancestor, which gave rise to Carolina wrens and Buick's wrens, but also this genus, Campylorhynchus, and then this ancestor, the shared most common recent ancestor of Carolina wrens and Buick's wrens. So my findings in my study were that during their evolutionary history, the ancestors of female Carolina wrens lost vocal complexity, their vocalizations diverged in structure from those of male Carolina wrens, but their ability to coordinate their vocalizations with males producing a crude duet was not lost. So this tree is a reconstruction of female vocal complexity in Troglodytidae. As you can see in the legend, the white is simple vocalizations, female vocalizations, and the black is complex female vocalizations. So again, Carolina wrens are right here and they produce simple female vocalizations. So I wanna start by looking at the ancestor of all wrens they had a 72% probability of producing complex vocalizations. Moving up here to this shared ancestor of Campylorhynchus, Thryotherus, and Thryomanes, and also Odontrochilus, which only has one species, there's a 97% chance of producing complex vocalizations. So as you can see, moving up here, almost all of these species maintain complex female vocalizations. And it's important to note also that this is a tropical genus. But then, Moving up here to the most recent common ancestor of Carolina wrens and Buick's wrens, there's only a 75% chance, or there is, there is a 75% chance that they produce simple vocalizations and only a 25% chance that they produced complex vocalizations. So it was between these two ancestors here that vocal complexity was lost. This next tree reconstructs similarity of female song to male song. So you can see our Carolina wrens here, are the white not similar. Looking back at the ancestor of all wrens, there's a 72% chance that they had female song that was similar to male song. And in this ancestor, there's an 81% chance that female song was similar to male song. However, once again, it was lost between this ancestor and the next ancestor, the most recent ancestor of Carolina wrens, wherein there's only a 40%, 41% chance that female song was similar in structure to male song. So I've already demonstrated that in the ancestors of Carolina wrens, both female complexity was lost and similarity of female song to male song. This final tree that I'm going to show you reconstructs duet coordination in Troglodytidae. So this one has three character states, no duet, crude duet, and coordinated duet. Carolina wrens, as I've mentioned with their rattle call, produce what I call, what I would like to call a crude duet. Um, not everyone agrees on this, obviously. But looking at the ancestor of all wrens, there's a 46% chance that they produced a highly coordinated duet. So a pretty moderate chance that this ancestor produced a coordinated duet. Moving up to this ancestor, however, it's the most likely with a 63% chance that they produced a crude duet. And 
in the most recent common ancestor of Carolina wrens, there's an 81% chance that they produced a crude duet. So as you can see, the overall coordination did decrease as a highly coordinated duet was replaced, replaced with a crude duet. However, duetting was not lost in the same way that female vocalizations, female vocalization complexity and similarity of female song to male song was. So what exactly does this mean? The fact that female vocal complexity and similarity of female song to male song were lost while duet coordination was maintained indicates that different aspects of vocal behavior can actually evolve separate from one another. Female Carolina wrens have vocalizations that are simpler and not similar to male songs, but they can still produce duets together. This suggests that male-female coordination plays an important role in social interactions among Carolina wrens. So why might it be that female vocalizations became simpler in Carolina wrens, but not in other species in the family Troglodytidae? When you're looking at the species that have maintained complex female songs, most of them reside at tropical latitudes. At tropical latitudes, generally these species have no need to migrate because the climate is very stable year round. Therefore, they have longer breeding seasons and they have convergent sex roles, which means in a mated pair, the male and female perform similar duties. However, in Carolina wrens and other temperate zone species, they have to deal with aspects of temperate climates such as seasonality, where winter and summer are very different, and therefore they have shorter breeding seasons and they will develop divergent sex roles where the male and females have to specialize and they perform different duties. So because of this, the loss of acoustic female complexity in female Carolina wrens is very well may, may be explained by the fact that the energy of females has to be allocated to other activities other than singing, like gathering resources or childcare. However, duets have been maintained. The presence of male-female duetting is generally associated with a lack of migration, which in turn means that these species are year-round territorial. When they're territorial, they live in the same place year-round, and they have to defend their territory from other birds. And duetting has been hypothesized to have a large function and communication in male and female pairs for defending their territory from other birds, from intruders. So Carolina wrens are not migratory, but they do also live, as I've mentioned, at temperate latitudes, which means that in addition to defending their territories, they also have to deal with resource swings due to the seasonality of their climates. And so the fact that they sing and duet year round because they need to defend their territories probably explains why they've maintained some duet coordination. While it's very likely that female singing alone probably did not serve an important role in territory defense in these ancestors, it seems very likely that duetting did. And so perhaps female song was selected against and replaced with this rattle call that we hear today. But the rattle call has very likely maintained the same function in duetting as female song once served. So, you know, this, this, <laughs> this female Carolina wren has a lot of different duties besides just singing. And so their duets aren't as coordinated as their ancestors once were. However, they have still maintained this duet. So this is all just speculation on my part as to why female vocal complexity has been lost, but duets have been maintained. It would be very helpful if there were more studies following the evolution of female vocal behavior in other wrens, especially tempered species, and especially studies conducted by women. And those studies could help justify my claims that latitudinal range plays a very large role in the evolution of vocal behavior, female vocal behavior in wrens. The more studies like mine, the more information we will have on the evolutionary forces that have shaped the ancestors of the birds that we know today.